Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly q and where you ask me questions and I answer them. No content at all this last week on the YouTube channel. It's just one of those weeks where I got a couple of other things going on that kind of just distract me, and then in the time that I have remaining, just not in the right state of mind to actually do some content. State of the Realm missing for the week, that was largely a schedule issue, but... That's a-okay. Um, had some thoughts videos. I wanted to put out some isolated ones on some of the things we've talked about on State of the Realm, such as a PvP video, as well as a couple of other things. But again, just one of those weeks. But I'm otherwise doing a-okay. We played through The Ruined King, the League of Legends turn-based RPG on story this week. I'm working on Pokemon right now. And this coming Tuesday on Twitch, I'm going to be doing my first subathon in a long, long time. For those who don't understand how it works, generally... I do a stream, I have a whole bunch of goals with different either punishments or uh, gameplay things that I'll do, like for example, a Final Fantasy V randomizer, or eat one of these delicious, delicious bastards. They're not delicious at all, they taste like shit. But all sorts of punishments and stuff forcing me to change my character to a bunny boy and endwalker, and even a grand, grand goal of a VTuber haps, which I made as unachievable as possible, so that way I don't realistically have to consider it unless something absolutely insane happens in which case i'd have no issue committing to something of that of that caliber but that's our endwalker copium it's not out yet really wish it was on tuesday subathon so that's going to be a grand old fun fun time so be sure to tune into the twitch stream you don't have to contribute but at least tune in you know come hang out that's the most important thing Anyway, with that, I got some stuff to do after this, speaking of a busy schedule, so let's get to the Q&A. Uh, thank you to all of our sponsors over on Patreon. They don't have to support. All my channel is free here on the YouTube channel. It always will be, but they choose the support over there, and I thank them for it. Thank you to our patrons of Darkness, Kucha Cross on Genova, and Kern Ioni for going above and beyond. Thank you to all of you for tuning in, and with that, let's get to some questions. All right, question number one, hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hello, hi, and I hope everything is going fine. A-OK, -okay. thank you for checking in. As someone who's been trying to get into 11, God bless your soul, I've been trying to have been having trouble deciding on which server to pick. Can you elaborate on what makes Asura so bad, or do you know a good alternative with an English-speaking population? So Asura is the Reddit server for Final Fantasy 11, and that's there's nothing inherently wrong with playing through the story on Asura. Um, but you're going to notice shout chat gets beyond questionable at times with some stuff that you'd hope would uh, falter to the, the farthest corners of the internet until you realize Final Fantasy XI in its almost 20 years now is just a corner of the internet. And it's not something you want to subject yourself to mentally. So as long as you're not planning on doing endgame content on Asura, then I'd say it's okay. Any other English server is really just going to be a really quiet experience and so unless you're playing with a friend on another server it really doesn't matter where you go you can finish the story solo on any server a server just has more population in case you are in need of other people so it is it is what it is it's just it's not it's not anything too crazy i just i just turn shout chat off, chat off on asura finish the story stop playing and it won't matter what server you're playing on Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hi, Haps. Hey, one thing I really like about some of the old dungeons was when they later got a hard version and we got to see how that dungeon had changed since we last adventured through. Even though we didn't get any in Shadowbringers, I think it's a fun idea. Are there any dungeons you would like to see eventually get a hard version? You know, I don't think there's any in particular that I want to see because the stories conclude for those dungeons the first time through. They then basically create scenarios that kind of allow us to revisit it. Tamtara, of course, is a great example of the continuation of a story that was beloved by people, but the dev team didn't really see that that was going to happen. It really caught them off guard. And so, uh, it's just... It's, it's hard to say. I don't think there's any dungeon in particular I'd want to see a hard mode of. I'd actually prefer to get new dungeons outright, but I love seeing... I agree with you that I think the idea was novel. I'm glad it wasn't just the same dungeon, but max level. Uh, but I'm not head over heels with the idea of continuing to do them constantly. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hello, Hap. I hope all goes well with your Thanksgiving week and you eat a lot of great food. Question for this week is below. Hello and thank you. I don't actually normally do much for Thanksgiving. Mel and I usually do like a honey baked ham. This year we're going to do some stuff, but um, even then it's, it's still not anything uh, too crazy. You know, just kind of chill. 
Uh, have you gotten around to making any recipes? No, I was actually going to go to the grocery store after this. I was thinking about making some of the stuff in here, honestly. I have it right here because I was looking at it just now. That's bookmarked. Um, some of this stuff is weird that it's even in here. Like, I, all of the sides, I don't know how to, I don't need to be told how to make, like, mashed potatoes and shit, you know? So that was kind of weird. The desserts, really, are probably the biggest section that I felt like I needed some inspiration. But, like, a great example, the Starlight Dodo. In here, great recipe, but it's it's this is a very standard recipe. So it's like, it's giving me the idea of making it, but it's not anything too exciting to make. Like a stuffed cabbage roll, I've done that before. Um, like I've never made a quiche, so I kind of want to make a quiche. Um, but again, this is all pretty standard for a quiche. You know, so it's, it's fun and it's interesting as a cookbook, but it's nothing too particular. It's a lot of very how do I say simple and safe versions of these dishes, which it actually needs to be that it doesn't, it shouldn't be something that's difficult. Like in my head, I'm thinking like, Oh, these are going to be like super themed and interesting. No, they're it's food at the end of the day. Like it's not, it's not supposed to be like hyper fancy or difficult or anything. Um, and so I'm kind of glad when I look back through it, but it also means that I'm not looking at any of these and going like, I have to make that. Cause a lot of it's stuff I've either already considered making or have made before, like deviled eggs. Like I love deviled eggs, but there's nothing about deviled eggs says to me, oh, Final Fancy Cookbook. This just looks like a regular recipe for deviled eggs. Um, I will say I noticed there's a lot of lamb, and like there's lamb, tuna, uh, and like not a lot of the standard meats. So that's something I'm actually not too, I, I don't cook with lamb very often. I just don't normally buy it. I normally go and I buy like, some chicken thighs or chicken breasts or like pork belly or something. And there's some of that in here too, but I noticed that they don't just use traditional, like buy them everyday meats or steaks or chickens or stuff for a lot of these recipes. And so um, that's kind of interesting to me. So like, I want to do the jerked jamel, which is essentially just a jerked lamb that needs to be cooked dry for a few hours, marinate it for a day and then cook it dry for a couple of hours. They have a bunch of uh, kebabs here, which is pretty standard meat, tuna, um, they have a sandwich basket, step salad. Here's the tuna kebab. Breads, I'm not super... I'm not great with bread, in all honesty. I just, I'm not much of a baker. The bouillabaisse, I've actually wanted to make a bouillabaisse. And so I think this is going to get me to do it. They go really ham, though. This is considered an easy difficulty one, but it's so many ingredients. Like, I don't... Like, it's... Let's see. Onion, celery, leeks, fennels, carrots... Tomatoes, garlic, salt, saffron, cayenne. Like, I don't keep most of this stuff around the house, which means I have to buy it specifically to make the bouillabaisse. And then for um, the actual soup, then you need clams, mussels, lobster tails, shrimp shells, scallops. It's like, I love seafood stews or seafood soups, bouillabaisse. But man, that is daunting to buy all of that stuff. So there's actually, there's a lot of recipes in here. Some of the slow, make, uh, slow made stews, the Oden, uh, a bunch of the main dishes, especially the uh, banjo, battered fish, uh, baschala, creamy salmon pasta is a super basic one, deep fried uh, okeanos, mole loaf looks really good, pan fried, like pan fried mahi mahi. It's literally like the most basic pan fried mahi mahi, just with a, with a light vegetable broth. And I don't even entirely agree with doing a vegetable broth for this because you're just giving, you're just doing like, you're taking the broth and adding a little bit of flour to make kind of like a gravy for it. And um, you're just trying to thicken it up with, even it says here, some sake and some lemon juice. So maybe the sake gives it like a nice interesting flavor, making a homemade pizza, which is always tough. Pork kakuni, I actually want to make this because pork belly is amazing. Rare roast beef, starlight dodo, like a lot of the, the main dishes are the things I'm most excited to make. So I'm going to look through that this week being Thanksgiving week. I probably won't do too many of them, but I might do like the jerky and like one other thing that's in there. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hey, happy. Hope you're getting enough sleep. <laughs> no. Hi to you, though. I'm trying to limit what jobs I play in Endwalker. I'm struggling to choose a DPS. Trying to limit them? Why? They all have such appealing components. Of course, Reaper looks great, but everyone and their mother will be playing it. Watch all the media tour videos. I'm still unsure. Can you share your thoughts on melee jobs and Summoner? Definitely play Summoner. Summoner is going to be so easy to pick up and put down that I see no reason if you're even mildly curious about it to just not do it 
because of how simple to approach it should be. For the melees, I would probably avoid Monk until we see the changes. Um, Dragoon's a straightforward, reliable one. Samurai, questionable. There might be some shenanigans happen with that. Ninja is going to have a lot of shenanigans, but its opener is going to be pretty straightforward and simple. I don't think it'll be scary. I think it'll look dumb while you're doing it, but I think it'll be easy to approach. I'm thinking Dragoon and Reaper are probably the most approachable, followed by Ninja, and then Samurai and Monk are up in the air, because if Monk is changed in any way or doesn't have to do that pre-pull shenanigans, Monk will be pretty fine. Samurai is pretty much the same. Uh, it should flow really easy. A lot of the components make sense, and that's true of all the melees, but I'd say if you want a nice, safe, limited bet, uh, go Dragoon. Uh, Dragoon, I, I think, is going to be a, a nice, smooth sailing for you. There's a question asking if my ISP has been in order. Meh, 50-50. I had, like, one little issue. Uh, not for too long. It was it was just nothing. It was nothing major. It, it just was, like, not working for, like, 20 minutes. Super great. Uh, but that's that was the whole answer to that question. Uh, somebody saying, uh, hey, Haps. Hope today finds you well. Same. Have a happy Thanksgiving. You too. Wanted to visit Japan at a fan fest. Seems like a good time to do this. I believe you went to one. Any advice for someone who is interested? So first of all, let's focus on there being an X-Fan Fest. Um, obviously, I say obviously, by then, you know, we're hoping the world hasn't burned over twice, essentially. And with the way the last couple of years have been, I'm not entirely convinced that that's always going to be possible. So number one, wait till we know that there's going to be another Fan Fest. Second of all, my advice is is use the train. Don't try to Uber, Lyft, don't take taxis. It's super expensive. Learn the train system. It's in English and Japanese. Very simple to understand. And I wish I had learned it not on my last day and learned it on my first day. Um, the other thing is know that FanFest for Japan is classically held about an hour outside of Tokyo. Even though it's at the same exact, it's called the FanFest in Tokyo. And it's uh, from the same place that Tokyo Game Show normally is hosted from when there's a physical event. That's like an hour outside of Tokyo. So you're going to be doing a lot of traveling that day, especially coming from either of the airports. You're looking at like an hour and a half to two hours out of either airport that you come into that is closest to that venue. So it's going to be a long day getting there. Definitely try to get a hotel pretty close to the actual place. There's one even attached to where Tokyo Game Show is run, but obviously that fills up super, super quick. So... That's it. Really, learn the train system, and if you're a fan fest in particular, understand where it is and how far away it is from everything. Because if you're going to do any sort of vacation stuff, you're going to need to plan around that distance. You're probably going to need multiple hotels booked if you want a comfortable time there. One near the actual venue, and one somewhere in the heart of Tokyo, like in Shinjuku or something like that. All right, so there were two quick ones that I'll just cover as like a mini lightning round. One was when can we, how can we will Blitzball into existence, and that gets a solid no for me. And the other one was uh, can we get a kitty cam during Twitch streams? And when Aloha's in my office, he's usually visible enough on the main cam. If it's not there, it's right next to me. So he's very rarely in one place long enough, and if he is, he's visible on the big cam, like you see here. So that's the answer is occasionally yes, but most of the time no because he just, he's so big, he takes up all the space anyway. As for the question in front of me, uh, this question, I actually read through it because it was it was quite lengthy um, text-wise. And the question was, have you ever considered diversity in Burst Window as a design choice slash niche of DPS? Largely talking about the fact that during my Bard and Monk videos for the media tour, I talked about how there were 90 second cooldowns on these jobs that didn't make sense as 90 second cooldowns. Um, bards I've thought about a lot more and bards is actually a lot more interesting of a 90 second because it is specifically designed around having a play decision between using it at 90 seconds and using it at 120 seconds. And that is whether or not it's a 4% buff or a 5% buff. It's deliberately designed in such a way that the gain for holding out for all three is less of a percentage than using it at 90 seconds, but there might be times where you want to get that 5% or you can get that 5% and then it's beneficial to have that like extra time to get the third coda. Bards is designed intelligently. So it being a 90 second cooldown will mean that there is a bit of player skill expression there. Bards who are really good will understand when to use a two stack radiant finale versus a three stack radiant finale. Whereas your average player may just choose to always save for a three stack or use it on 90s every time as a two stack. And it'll it'll do its job, it'll be a buff, but it won't be as effective as the players who really know how it's lining up with uh, burst windows and stuff like that on specific fights. Monks, on the other hand, is stupid. Monks is literally just more attack speed. 
It's uninteractive, it's not intuitive, and while it technically can follow those same measurements of, you know, knowing, oh, can I just use this here, or should I actually hold this for two minutes because of a, a mechanic that's happening, it's such a not interesting ability as a whole, since it's just auto attack speed. So it's interaction with everybody else. It essentially means if I have a bard in the party, I need it to line up with every Radiant Finale. And Radiant Finale is going to be placed at the best possible times whenever. And that's it. It's essentially you'll follow the same rules as a bard does, but with a far less interesting ability. So my big thing for the question, though, is it's not so much that these abilities are bad to have. It doesn't make sense to have the entire game based around 60s and 120 seconds. Have that as your baseline and then to just not do that for a couple of abilities because what ends up happening is you end up just going back on your word anyway. You end up either changing more abilities back to 90 seconds or you change these 90s into 120s eventually because its design philosophy is causing dismay with a portion of your player base. The player base that probably doesn't understand how to optimize it most specifically. So it just seems like something that will survive short term and at that point you might as well just nip it in the bud and just fix it and change it and rebalance it around that time frame. As long as it's something that is super crucial to the overall job and how it lines up. With Ley Lines, they've already given a detailed explanation as to why Ley Lines is staying 90 seconds. It's because it's not only a damage tool, it's also a movement tool. And the way it interacts with the way Black Mage wants to play doesn't benefit from it being more frequent or less frequent. It just needs to be as it is. So I understand that. But the other two abilities I don't feel like follow in that same vein. So I just think we don't see those as 90 seconds past Endwalker or maybe even until the end of Endwalker. Uh, there's a question before this asking if we're going to need to level up our trusts to use them in Endwalker. Probably not. I mean, there are some characters who are outright job changing. Some of them are going to have new appearances. So uh, no. And not to mention there's still story mode anyway. There's story mode and avatar mode. So you'd still be able to do them in story mode, which is all you really need to actually go through the dungeons. So no, you won't need to actually level the old ones. Wouldn't make sense with the system we have now. And then this one. Uh, hi, Haps. Hope you're doing well. You too. Uh, could you explain the timey wimey spell Louis Swa Cassidy of 1.0? You know, I don't think we've gotten the exact name of that spell or what that spell, how he learned it, how he knew how to do it. Um, however, that spell sends the Warrior of Light and his companions five years into the future. So essentially, he saves them from that day. He's like, you cannot die. You need to go on. You need to survive. So the calamity comes to happen, the events of Flames of Truth happen, and then five years go by, and then we magically reappear. The spell leaves the legacy mark on the back of our neck. That is not an Archon tattoo. That is the result of that spell sending us forward in time. And that's it. We continue where we left off. Uh, if you're a legacy player, uh, this only applies to legacy players, by the way. This doesn't apply to the uh, people who just started the game after A Realm Reborn. They get the cutscene where they're on the... Uh, they're on the carriage and, you know, they they go into town and whatnot. But legacy players get this, like, teleporting cutscene where it actually shows us being teleported into the present time. And then it continues on to the stuff that uh, <clears throat> everybody experiences and everybody knows that actually happens. There's a lot of dialogue differences for legacy players also in, uh, in uh, 2.0 specifically. So that's all it is. He's just sending us forward in, in time five years so we don't die that day so we can start repairing the world and fixing it from the future. So funnily enough, this one doesn't have a hashtag, but it's about Final Fantasy XI master levels. So stupid. <laughs> so Final Fantasy XI added even more leveling because when Final Fantasy XI needs more content, they just add more leveling. That's their specialty. It was First it was leveling, then there was merit points, then there were tier two merit points, then there were job points, then they started making merit points a currency for other things. And now once you have all the job points and you're mastered on a job, you can earn master uh, master levels, which increase your sub jobs levels. <laughs> Oh my god. You know what though? Final Fantasy XI, almost 20 years old. I'm glad they're still doing something for it. The people playing it enjoy it. And the power gain from raising your sub job is actually massive. So it gives players a sense of forward progression while still not invalidating the rest of the content. Um, which is kind of key to Final Fantasy XI, especially since they stopped adding kind of upward trends to the game outside of more powerful gear, or gear with more interesting or uh, unique effects. Uh, so it makes sense. It works, but it, I, it's just, it's so stupid to talk about out loud whenever I hear it.
Next one. Hey, Happy. Hope you're doing well. Same to you. Thank you for saying hello. Bit of an odd question. Do you have any suggestion for solo challenge content? Ooh. Well, you've got two weeks to solo all the Heavensward Extreme Trials, and some of those can get pretty tough. They're a lot easier now with having, like, item level 530 and 535 stuff. Uh, but they're all soloable, and getting through those would be a nice basic way. Palace of the Dead, Heaven on High, very, very obvious suggestions. Rathalos, Extreme, soloable by some jobs it's a lot easier now again with a little more item level and you do want echo for that also um lakshmi a very boring solo but a doable one um all of alexander savage so you need to be so a3s you have to kill before you get throttled as long as you do that you're fine or you have to go a healer so you can get rid of throttle uh a4s unsoloable at the moment actually i'm sure there's some like random like blue mage ridiculous shit that's happening i don't know there i'm i wouldn't be surprised but that, that one not soloable a8s one of the toughest solos um that's been done by a blue mage it requires a very specific burst window and a lot of rng um you can also do it as warrior but that also requires a very 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 specific setup um, and if you screw it up in any capacity, and even if you don't screw it up, it's still very likely you die right after the section that you need to survive. A12, a lot of auto attack RNG, but that one can be a good solo. But all of Alexander Savage has its ups and downs. But to, to go through and solo that stuff, Palace of Dead Heaven on High, and then he gives you an idea of what you can try going into Endwalker. Next one, greetings and salutations. Hello, with a significant overhaul in Summoner, do you think they will, will they have or will alter Summoner job quest to be more in line with their alterations? No, because they still have the core components of it um, are mostly present still. Like they made sure that the level ranges, you pick some of those things up, make sense still relative to the quest, but it's not, what you're achieving from the quest isn't the same anymore. So that's almost, I guess you could consider it not really a retcon because it's, you still do what it says. It's, 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 it's kind of walking a fine line, but like when you beat Garuda, Ifrit and Titan Eggies, that's when you learn their upgrades at the lower levels, you know? Um, so, th and that's still kind of a key thing as far as I'm concerned, but then they have like all these new skills and completely changed gameplay style. But I don't think that means you have to change the quests. I think they could, but I don't think they will. Next one. Hello, Haps. Hi. Long-time viewer, first-time asker, and wishing you all the shiny luck and peace. <laughs> Palkia is going to be a fun time. Assuming you get those games. Yeah, Shining Pearl for me. Uh, question for today is more related to the feel of Reaper. Oh, is this going to be like what job is closest compared to it? Uh, yeah. What uh, Making a jump from Dragoon to Reaper, uh, how do you think the jump would feel and what classes mostly embody Reaper? Reaper doesn't really have a job that feels closest to it. Like it has the speed of Machinist during its biggest burst windows, but it's so GCD heavy that it doesn't really feel like any of the other ones. Now it's not to say that other jobs aren't GCD heavy, but it's got very, very little in the way of off global management. You basically just need to make sure you never are wasting gauge. And if you have a burst window coming up, that you don't overcap gauge and that you make sure you have the right amount of gauge going into it so you can make the best use of it. But it doesn't really feel like anything else. I mean, it barely has any positionals, kind of like, uh, you know, Samurai, barely any, just the occasional ones. It's got a speedy phase that's like Machinist and it's otherwise just like that same speed as Dragoon with a lot of GCDs and not a lot of OGCDs. I think you'll feel okay. I don't think it's, I don't think it's anything worth considering. I think you'll be a-okay. So there's another question before this one that asked what IPs I think are realistic to collaborate with. I listen, the collaborations are sometimes fun. I've enjoyed them before, but I'm not like gung ho for them. I'd rather 14 focus on its own content and its own events. Um, if they happen and they're fun and I enjoy them, great. But I'm not. It's, it's not something I'm excited about. Final Fantasy 16, and maybe eventually a seven remake one when Part Two comes out or something. Who knows? But that's it, honestly. I, I don't look at other IPs. I don't want any other IPs. Just focus on stuff that's like Final Fantasy or, or, or fits in the world and it's not these weird... Don't do near ever again is what I'm trying to say. Uh, then there's one right here that says, oh, it's not even a question. It says, how are you doing? That is that is the question. I, I want to say your channel's great. Looking forward to future videos. Thanks. Man, the question before this one was, do you think Reaper... I, another one I skipped past. Reaper will have anything to do with Black Mage? Yeah, I think the Reaper unlock is going to happen right outside the Thaumaturge Guild. Because I want it to. And it would be funny. Because <laughs> they're in Uldah. They are unlocked in Uldah. And I think that... Uh, yeah, that's going to make for good times. Um, I know we're about to be in 6.0. No, hello? Why did I even take this one? 
You think we'll ever get Time Mage? Astro is our Time Mage. I know it's not. It really isn't. But it's designed to be our Time Mage. So, no. I don't think we'll ever get a proper... I would... Listen, Yoshi P. I will design you a Time Mage. Call me up. You, you uh, Do you have my number? I'm sure there's a document I've signed somewhere that has my number on it. You got my number, I'm sure. Call me up. I'll design it. It's fine. Just you can trust me on this one. It's unfortunate. It's going to be a healer, so it might be a few expansions. I could make it a DPS if you really wanted it to Yoshi P, but, you know, it's it's not how I envision it. So, you know, that's... Um, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, Yoshi P. So don't worry. Just just, just, just call me up. I'll take care of it. Uh, do, you ever think they'll make, do you think they'll ever make 8-man dungeons? No. That's an easy... No. It's after Praetorium and Catrum, we'll never see another one. Uh, so there was one before this asking about Gladiator branching off into another job. They said they're never doing that again. So that's why I skipped that question. They, they've been very clear that doing it with Summoner and Scholar was a huge mistake, doing Arcanist and the two jobs. They're never going to do another branch off a of class. They don't even want to use classes. If they could, they would get rid of classes altogether. But it's very difficult to do from both a lore and technical standpoint. So that's the only reason we even still have classes in the game right now. So that's going to be a big nope. Um, but this question, hello, hi, thank you for saying hello. Long time viewer, first time asker, welcome. Seeing how the media tour potencies of actions aren't set in stone, are there any actions off the top of your head you think need adjustments potency wise? For example, like Sage's Toxicon, I'd like to deal more damage than Discrasia, but not more than Phlegma. No, I think Toxicon is, is done properly. So Toxicon is a reward <clears throat> in many ways that isn't damage when it comes to properly proccing a shield. So if you're gonna shield somebody anyway, this essentially helps make up for the MP cost and adds to your mobility because it's an instant cast. It's also AOE, so in large groups, you'll feel like the expenditure of a GCD to give the tank a shield is actually worth something damage-wise in an AOE situation. So Toxicon, I can't imagine changes. I don't think it should. I think it should stay the same as Dosis uh, and Discrasia, as you've uh, Discrasia Dosis, as you've uh, spoken right here. Uh, as for my own thoughts, you know, I'd have to look back over them all to really nail one down um, because I think there were, I think I remember in my media tour videos, there's at least one or two that I thought, oh, um, there is one, Ninja's uh, Bunchen Finisher. I can't, I don't remember the name. It's, I haven't had to say it in so long. I could just pull it up real quick. Yeah, um, so Ninja got a new skill that they can only use during Bunchen, but weirdly enough, while it uses a stack of Bunchen, it doesn't benefit from the shadow because the attack itself is actually executed by the Bunchen clone. So it only hits once. And because of that, its potency is kind of underwhelming. Uh, it doesn't feel good as like a two minute skill unless you're in like a large group of enemies. And in my opinion, it just, it doesn't make sense, like, at all, the way that it's done. Phantom Kaimaichi. Oh, uh, yeah. Phantom Kaimaichi. That's the one. Or Kaimaichi. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Kaimaitachi. There you go. Phantom Kaimaitachi. There's there's what it is. Yeah, that one. That's that's the one off the top of my head that I think needs a potency buff from what we played at the Media Tour. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hello. Hi. Where'd you get your cat tower and would you recommend it? If you're talking about that one, I buy all of them just off Chewy. I just go through the list and occasionally buy one. If you're going to get a cat tower, though, be weary of the one. So you've got this one, which just has, like, the ropes. And my cats don't really like the ropes for scratching posts very much. This one, on the other hand, is made of, like, a carpet-like material. And they love that. But the problem is they scratch off all the fibers. So you need to either constantly be vacuuming the fibers. Or you need to have cats that don't like to chew on things like fibers or the little... Uh, I think they're like little like plastic things underneath that actually connect it to the tower. Uh, if you've got a cat that's destructive of carpets, you'll have to replace these constantly. They're great for stopping them from actually using your carpet carpet, but they're annoying to maintain. So depends on what your needs are, but that's what I would say about the two behind me. All right, this one was a long one, so I read it in advance, but you said hello, so I'll say hello, and I hope you're doing well also. It's basically taking kind of a throwaway comment Yoshi P made about... Um, how they're working on addressing the fact that we don't have enough glamour space uh, and they'll probably do something after the 6.0 launch, you know, just not before 6.1. And yeah, we didn't really pay much mind. I remember under my breath saying transmog and it didn't seem to imply because they, they were so unspecific and also the mention of more plates, more space were brought up kind of just as a blanket statement as well. And as soon as they say more space, that reads to me expanded plates, expanded dresser, and nothing more. So 
I don't think we get a rehaul of the trans, of that's the transmog, of the glamour system as much as I 100% think we need one. It's not good. <laughs> it's too bogged down in like really weird design decisions that are not player friendly. So please fix it, but I won't be surprised if all they do is add more space. All right, this one doesn't have a hashtag, but I said hello, so I noticed it. Hi, I hope you're having a great day also. And Aloha's not in here. My door is closed, closed. He cannot even get in here. Ivy was trying to get in here earlier. It's contemplating the story of the coils, and I was wondering, are primals templates? Is each individual summoning a unique entity? I was wondering what would happen if Bahamut was summoned again. So I think this very much has to do with the nature of the summoning itself. Um, for the most part, the answer is yes. If you were to take the exact same uh, ritual and just perform it over and over and over again, they're not going to be like you again. But if the people doing the summoning or the beast tribes doing the summonings were to incorporate the memories of our defeat of it into their summoning ritual, then they would probably come back with some semblance of recognition of who we are and what happened the last time that we met. But instead, if they're just summoned exactly the same way with the exact same memories being used, the exact same crystal, everything about it is identical. Yeah, they would essentially be templates. A big thing about Bahamut being resummoned is that Bahamut himself was a regular dragon. He was killed, and then the Asians tricked the uh, Maricidian dragons, Tiamat and her brood, into summoning Bahamut back to fight back the Allegans, and then he was captured and used as a power source, which eventually caused the earthquake that destroyed the civilization of the Allegans, yada, yada, yada. Um, but he was also way stronger when we encountered him in Dalamud because he'd essentially been trapped there for 5,000 years, being sustained and being used as an energy source until the point where he could actually influence people on the planet side to actually try to get them to do stuff to release him. That's what we saw uh, with the Meteor Project the first time around. That's what we saw with Nail that would eventually happen. And But if we were to re-summon Bahamut with whatever amount of ether that they used way back in 5,000 years ago in the Maricidian War with, Al with Alag, he would be much weaker because he hasn't been living off of that ether and being sustained for the last 5,000 years. But if you were to then summon him with more ether and feed in those memories, he'd be way stronger, most likely. But you'd have to make sure you're actually replacing the ether in its exact amount, and then it would be a disaster, probably. So, yeah, that's it's a very finicky thing, and a lot of this stuff is derivative of the experiences we've had and isn't clearly stated because they've tried to keep a lot of summoning stuff kind of under wraps so that they can go through certain aspects of understanding the way tempering, excuse me, the way tempering works, the way summoning works. And they've constantly layered on new elements over the years. So some of the stuff I'm saying here could end up not being true by the time we get a, a written out in fact statement of how it works. Or they may never explain it and we'll, it'll continue to be derivative. So that's how we're led to understand it, however. All right, so I've taken a lot more time than I expected to answer some of these questions, so I'm going to lightning around the rest of them. I have no idea how many there are, so I'm just going to get going because I've got some shopping to do. I've got some... Uh, actually, I really want to work on some videos, and I want to see if I can get closer to Palkia in Shining Pearl so that I can shiny stream that tomorrow. Or when you guys see this today, come watch me just suck at it, or I didn't get there and you have to watch me mow through the whole game with Alakazam as I normally do. Uh, so this one is, when do you think we'll get an engine upgrade? 7.0 at the earliest, even I think that might be a little too early, but it has it's most likely at a major expansion launch and not sometime between. Um, do you think they'll ever give people a free story skip to get caught up? I don't think it'll be a free story skip. I think they'll add a way for you to expedite leveling that doesn't involve having to do all of the old main scenario quests. So it's not even a free story skip, but more like making sure that it's reasonable to get caught up. And that it isn't, you know, a 50-hour expansion added to the experience every two years that you have to get through to play with your friends. Uh, I, I do think they're probably working on a solution for that, but that isn't just giving you a free story skip potion. Uh, talking about BA, cool, much easier than I expected. Told you, don't be afraid of BA. Don't be afraid of it. You'll be okay. Trust me. You'll be okay in BA. This one said hello, so I'm definitely going to say this. I haven't played 11 in a long time. What happened to the server that I went? Yikes. Oh, everything I explained before. Just 
shout turn shout chat off and you won't notice. The big other thing with Asura is that most of shout chat that isn't questionable things being said is mercenaries. It's it's people selling content and that can be from anywhere from guild to real money. I know someone who sold job points, which is basically just experience points that you gain to unlock new features for your job. Um they sold, like, they would basically just automate earning them and then sell spots in their party to people who just don't want to actually do the grind themselves. And they were making, like, 40 grand a year doing that. And it was fucking stupid. So, it's, yeah, there's, Eleven is full of shit like that. It's a lot of, uh, and Asura is a, is a fucking hive mind of it. They're like, just mark it. 120 million guild to do this content? Sure. Oh, you don't have it? Just go buy. It's literally, a lot of it is a cesspool. A lot of Asura is a cesspool. But if you just want to do the story, turn Shout Chat off, it'll be fine. You won't have an issue. The economy is very, very cheap on Asura for the most part because of the number of people who play. But don't read Shout Chat. Save yourself the trouble. It's a fucking nightmare reading Shout Chat there. Um, there's a hello from this one. Uh, Final Fantasy related questions. Is there anything special to look out for the, for the first couple of days? Um, achievements, glamours, grab some hot cocoa, prepare. I'd say just prepare for a great story for N Walker. There's things you can do to like prepare to maybe earn some gill, but that's about it. Um, it's not that, uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's that in depth. It's just, you can enjoy it just as is. So just do that. Just enjoy it as is. Um, how many times they've emphasized final chapter of this star? What do you think that actually means? It means that Hydaelyn is the star. So the biggest thing is that Hydaelyn is the planet. Eorzea is where the game takes place for the early portions. It's um, I always get my continent names mixed up. It's Vilbrand and Aldenard, if memory serves, are the names of the areas. So um, that's just Eorzea. Then you have Ilsebard, you have Authord, and then you have the New World and Mericidia and the uh, the Old Seas where uh, Old Charlian is located. And um, yeah, it's the star. It's 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 the finale of the Zodiac Hydaelyn story. So quite literally, you know, Heidelin is the star, final chapter of the Heidelin story. Translates literally, basically. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, people leave dungeons not infrequently. Not the most common. I was wondering if you could expand on reasons why folks do this. People, most of the time when people leave a dungeon, mo for, the first thing that people who don't really want to do the dungeon but want to see if they get something that's okay, they check what they're actually doing. Steps of Faith to this day still has levers. Like, I get one or two levers every time I do Steps of Faith. Because they see it and they go, I'm not doing this. Even though it's like a three minute, it's three minutes of you attacking legs and then you're done. It's like one of the easiest trial roulettes to get that isn't like Garuda or Ifrit or something like that. It's so easy and not time consuming. People just leave. Some people leave when they see too many sprouts. I've seen that happen. Um, if they especially see like a new tank and they know it's a dungeon that has like kind of annoying mobs. I've seen people leave for that. I've seen people leave for healers that won't DPS. I've seen people try to vote kick healers who don't DPS. I've, I've seen all sorts of stupid shit. It's why I just don't duty finder very often. It's like, I'm not going to be a part of that. And I don't want to, I don't want to be a quitter. So it's like, I'm just kind of caught between with trying to just sh sit down, shut up, do the right thing. We're here to do a dungeon. Who cares how it gets done? What gets done? How quick it gets? Who cares? Just fucking do it. Just stop complaining. Play the game. Do your best. Try to make up the difference and take it as an opportunity to see, uh, you know, for a good story. For like when you go to tell somebody else, don't just leave and be a whiny bitch. Unless you only have 30 minutes to play and you're going to be fucked if you actually sit there and do it. In which case, you probably shouldn't have joined the roulette in the first place. Just saying. Uh, have cats ever affected your playing 14? No, I don't think they've ever directly gotten me killed. Sometimes I'll blame them, but I don't think they've ever gotten me uh, KO'd in-game. Um, do you have any idea speculation about Sage lore? No. We know it's very medicine-driven, so it's probably going to end up being something they created to safely and pr uh, precisely heal and assist, uh, assist in the way of um, the patients and whatnot. But uh, it is Charlian. That much we know. <laughs> we do know that it is it is Charlian born. Uh, let's see. Main preferred all thing. I don't know if I should level up, play through the MSQ, or just dive into the MSQ with my samurai. I mean, that's up to you. If you want to play Reaper or Samurai, do, it's up to you. Um, how Whether you want to level Reaper and then do MSQ, or just still go through it. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. It's 
like a few hours of leveling Reaper difference. So if you're worried about spoilers, maybe, and you just want to get ahead on Samurai so you don't miss spoilers, then that would make more sense. But I mean, that probably won't be that far ahead anyway, because most people are not going that fast. So that's about the only reason I could say you could go one way or the other, one way or the other. Um, let's see. <coughs> Uh, let's see. Couldn't take off work. That's unfortunate. I know you plan on leveling Reaper first. Do you have any plans for combating people coming in and spoiling? I've never had an issue. I did the same with Dancer. And it never happened there. So I'm not worried about it, about spoilers at all. Um, and if they do, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. That's really for other people more than me. I'm the kind of person who will generally shut down spoiler talk for other people but I will literally, if I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to go see that movie. Let me wiki, let me wiki it and read the entire plot section to decide if I want to go see it. That includes the end of the fucking movie, but I don't care. So I'm like the worst person to try to spoil. Like I might make a little bit of a hissy fit, but that's because I hadn't made yet the conscious decision to go do that. But I'm not that bothered by it at the end of the day. So... But I've also never had an issue with people coming in trying to spoil 14 story stuff. Sometimes people come in and talk about stuff I've already done and they assume that I'm okay with it, but I don't want them to do it because other people haven't done it yet. That's worse than me being spoiled, which doesn't happen all too often. Especially because I go through pretty quickly when it comes to story stuff. Uh, this is another one with hard mode dungeons, uh, wall to wall pull. You're never going to get away. Dungeons are at their core, designed to be wall-to-wall, -wall, get them done in 15 minutes. Casual players can get in, get out, get their tomes and be done. They've said that, it's never going to change. So the closest thing you'll get is Palace and Heaven on High. You'll never get an actual, like, hard dungeon unless they are making a type of content, like a mythic set system, that is designed for it. But just regular dungeons? No, you're not going to get that. And also, they're not going to just suddenly make one or two random hard dungeons now and again. Unless, again, there's an entire separate system for them existing. Uh, we have a first-time asker here. Long-time viewer. Welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, wondering at what point do you think they'll sell previous expansion augmented Tombstone Gear for Poetics the day early access comes out? That's it. Literally November, uh, November 19th. Sad face! That's not true. December 3rd. <laughs> Soon as servers are up, you'll be able to buy them. Easy. Uh, do you think they'll ever add a level sync feature? I don't think they'll retroactively go back and add one, no. They should, but they won't. It's also not that bad nowadays. I did Eureka from 1 to 60 and finished an entire weapon and armor set minus Baldessian Arsenal in 40 hours. Solo. I made sure nobody came and helped me. I just like... Went into the zone, did my own thing, maybe joined parties for NMs, and that was it. And it went super smooth. So, they are going to be making changes to Eureka, though, probably just the Hydados, because it's the one not quality of life set, and so they probably should. But that's, uh, that's about it, really. Uh, then we had here... What are some good places you can go to get started to learn healing? Momo, FFXIV Momo's channel. And also, he's posting videos over on Icy Veins. So be, follow, be sure to follow Momo and Icy Veins. I'm also posting videos to Icy Veins. I should make a video standalone about the fact that I'm working with Icy Veins. So you guys can go to Icy Veins, like the videos over there so they do well over there. And know that I'll be posting extra videos over there. Anyway, I gotta do that. That's one of those videos I put off doing for this week. I should really do it. Uh... There's another, there's a spoiler question about the Asians that I actually don't know the answer to off the top of my head. So, Sylvia, sorry, I don't actually know the answer off the top of my head, so I can't, I can't actually answer it. Um, let's see, Alpha Scape, uh, curious what the yellow shade in your glasses, this is, these glasses protect against blue light. Um, you can achieve similar things with many programs that actually alter the blue light that comes off your monitor, but they're essentially eye protection for sitting in front of computer screens for hours and hours and hours on end. I got these back when I worked in New York City. You know, I was looking at 25 to 30 different computer screens doing internal tech support. So it didn't make sense to try and install blue light mitigators on all of them. So I just went down to Best Buy and got these. These are like gunners from like 2011 or 2012 or something like that. But they still work. So I'm not complaining. Uh... The, oh, the Kisaki games. Yeah, that's a Cold Steel related thing. Somebody, another person asking about Time Mage. I just talked about that. The big thing about Time Mage is that there are some things that wouldn't exist on Time Mage. You will not speed up your allies' GCD. 
You will not slow down your allies' GCD. And you cannot slow down enemy boss attacks. A weaker enemy, sure. So a lot of the classic spells that are usually time associated would have to do things like increase movement speed or slow move. Like if you put a slow field down, it would have to do damage over time. And so it would essentially be Shadow Flare. That's, that's what it would be. It would literally be Shadow Flare, but as a time mage skill with like its own animation. So um, just bear that in mind because as a time mage enthusiast myself, I've thought about it long and hard. Uh, let's see. What are you, uh, what you're saying is uh, it works in, I don't know what this means. If you're anyone, okay, there's somebody making a reference about the primal power. I, I guess I, I don't, I guess I don't understand it. Um, so I unfortunately don't get the reference. Do you think we'll still be the warrior of light or dark? I think that we've already kind of moved away from that moniker, but other people keep calling us by it. <laughs> We're just like, bro, I'm just here to save the world. That's it. I'm, I'm an adventurer. No, I think they will try to do kind of a hard reset to us just being recognized as an adventurer. But that's never going to be a smooth sailing thing. People are always going to call us the Warrior of Light, Warrior of Dark, all that good stuff. Because they're not going to know everything that happened. And uh, how we feel, because we just nod or shake our head, and that's about all we do. Uh, let's see. Vinny Lister suggested items you can permanently lose. That's on you. I can't tell you what to throw away. I'm not going to be responsible for that. I'm not going to be responsible for that. Trying to get keyboard and mouse any ideas on games that would be good practice? Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> That'd be a great game for it. Uh, let's see. I see the mascot on stream. I think we're coming close to the end here. Uh, I don't want to spend two weeks being sad I'm not playing Endwalker. Probably. Oh, you're going to try out other Final Fantasy games? Not a big fan of turn-based? If you're not a big fan of turn-based, Zodiac Age is a great place to start. Um, but... There's, I mean, you can play Type-0. I'm not a big Type-0 fan myself. Um, you have Crystal Chronicles, which is hit or miss also. Uh, but man, it, not like in turn-based. That makes it a lot tougher. I'd say that even for fans of not turn-based, 10 is pretty good. And of course, you could try out 11 <laughs> if you really want, but I don't think that's going to be a good idea either. Um, but yeah, those are just a few recommendations. Zodiac Age would have been my top recommendation, though. So that would have been the big one. Uh, also, if you're just not looking for Final Fantasy, try Tales of Arise. I didn't finish it, but it, it was really good. So I could definitely recommend. The parts that I've played, I have very few complaints about. Um, another big Asian question. Um, feel disappointed all the potentially interesting Asians were sort of swept under the rug. Well, they were Sundered. So I don't care about them anyway. <laughs> and honestly, even some of the Sundered ones got pretty good stories, especially Mitron. But I'm not going to talk about that too much here without a spoiler warning. So... Um, oh, somebody actually answered down here. Um, Emmett, Se um, Emmett Selk's role was the architect. There you go. La Habrea was the speaker. There you go. That's what it is. That's why it's the, the words of La Habrea down below. Okay, there you go. Um, I didn't try the... I didn't get into the Elden Ring closed network test, but that looks amazing, and I wish I had gotten into it. Trust me, I would have made content on it if I got into it. Uh, what is your favorite anime? I don't really watch it. Like, all of my animes that I know are from 20 years ago. Like, they're Yu Yu Hakusho, they're Dragon Ball Z. Like, the only thing I still somewhat follow is Dragon Ball Super. And that's because I grew up with it. So it's like, it's not even really anime to me. It's just like, it's like nostalgic from like a kid's perspective. But they're, that's it. They're all like old ones. Like, I had Outlaw Star as a kid. I, I, but I, I have not watched One Piece, Naruto. Um, I think I've seen clips of, like, My Hero Academia. Like, sometimes because I, I follow Dragon Ball shit, I get random anime clips pop up on my YouTube, and I'll just, like, they'll, like, autoplay, and I'll just be like, whatever. I'm sure a bunch of, like, Attack on Titan auto clips have played at some point. But that's it. Like, it's just all those. Like, I'll just go back to Dragon Ball Z or Yu Yu Hakusho or something like that from, like, 20 years ago. Or longer. Those are older than 20 years ago. I'm just saying 20 years as a generic... A, just as a generic year number to say. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is a good way to make money in this game? That's a loaded, loaded question. Let me tell you. And I think that might be the last question. Um, because there's just a lot of comments after that. Aloha, aloha, aloha. Preventative post trolls is becoming a thing. People not seeing hateful language and posting to be nice and understanding. Please never use that thumbnail again. It was terrifying. Yeah, I actually deliberately like when it's like that. Um, might take the PvP system, apply it to scalable dungeons? No. You mean... Oh, do you mean the battle pass? They could they could do the battle pass and more types of content. 100%. If they really wanted to, they could do it outside of PvP. See, uh, yeah, I'll say yes to that. Sure, why not? Um, assuming that that's what you're referring to. Um, 
I, I, new system supposed to take weight. Oh, no, 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 no. I will not play a dungeon system if it's like the PvP where they're trying to take pressure off rolls. I won't do it. It's, it, it, it'd be a huge fucking failure, in my opinion. Uh, think 16, with the 16 story bring it somewhat to the, no, 16 and 14 have nothing to do with each other. Uh, and I think that might be, oh my god, there's so many. Started playing here. Is it possible that Scholar gets a mid-expansion rework? It's possible anybody could get a mid-expansion rework. Doesn't mean they'll do it, but it's always possible. Um, curious follow-up. Oh, somebody's asking about why I don't really care for questions like, would you rather fight or which anime fictional world would you want to live in? Yeah, I had somebody else comment be like, I didn't realize you had no sense of imagination. I'm like, no, I'm just a pra... Somebody actually nailed it. I'm a practical thinker, and I think to myself... I am me. If I'm in a fantasy world and like I live there and I've become that, I'm not automatically the hero. You know what I mean? Like it's just how I think practically. It, it, you, you see these worlds and they're glorified through the vision of the main character or they're horrified through the vision of the main character. And I understand I am the only anime I'm the main character of is my own life. <laughs> And even then, sometimes I question it. But if life was anime and I'm the main character, nobody's watching that shit. Nobody, Netflix isn't renewing that for a second season. So uh, that's, again, just a very, very practical thinker. I do not think about living in fantasy worlds. I don't find any appeal in it because all of those worlds also suck. <laughs> they just suck for reasons that are far more entertaining to us because we're not living it. That's how I feel about that. But that is the last question, and this still ended up taking forever because there's just been so many questions. I just can't, I hate not answering questions, but there's so many of them that the only ones I skip are ones that are just like repeats or whatnot. It's, just, it's tough, man. I wish I could skip them more readily, more easily. I wish I could just force myself to answer less questions, but I just want to answer questions for you. Anyway, enjoy another long episode. I gotta go to the grocery store. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and ask your questions in the comment section of the video below. Thank you for that, and I'll be watching. See you later. Join Subathon on Tuesday and Pokemon Shiny. Good luck. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.